Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with episode 30, part one of my golf vlog series, featuring the front nine of the Woods course at Kings Mill Resort. If you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated, as those things really do help me out when it comes to getting the video out to more people and being able to reach and inspire them. So, with that being said, let's hop into it. So I was a bit of a slower swing speed. I kind of rolled right out there and didn't really take any warm-up swings. So that was my kind of first swing of the day. But it had a really good drive. It hit a great shot in here. It was just like all over the flag. You can actually see um, bounced a little bit forward and checked pretty good. So <clears throat> really good start so far. And uh, I just knocked this one in real quick, like maybe two feet. So. It's always nice to start with a nice little gimme putt for birdie. And so on to hole number two. So already in red numbers and a uh, little three iron off the tee here. Came over the top a little bit and pulled this one a bit left. Definitely not the best spot to miss it. I probably should have aimed a little more right. Um, if I got the chance to play this course again, I definitely would have set myself up a little bit more to the right so now not in the worst trouble here but still got it it's kind of a weird shot over a tree and water but if you just kind of take it in as it is it's not that hard of a shot so I was just trying to make a good swing on it here and I hit it about 60 yards into the water <laughs> and yeah so I ended up having to take a drop and you know I was to make sure I didn't make sure I didn't have any tree trouble, but this was a tough day because there wasn't a ton of wind. There's a little bit of wind, but the hardest part was I, I don't know the exact um, type of grass this was. This appears to be Bermuda grass, but I'm not positive. But it was a very strong grain for, of grass, meaning that the blades were very strong of the grass, so it really put a lot of resistance on the club. And the water, the, the ground was very wet, very, very wet. So when you got um, very strong blades of grass and the, the soil under is very sticky and wet, it's very easy to um, catch it heavy. So after this hole, one of the things I had to do to make that adjustment was I had to get a little steeper with my shots to catch ball first and encourage ball first contact. So that's kind of one of the adjustments you'll see me make as I progress through the round. And this is a pretty good drive, left it out a bit right. Um, this is one of those holes where my distance was a huge advantage because it, it carried, so there, it was about 330, 340 to carry the water on the right. So it was more of just, just, just blast it and make sure you get over the water first. So it turned this into a pretty manageable par four. We missed it just far enough. And you can see, look how much, how sticky that um, grass is there. So I really had to get steep to just catch ball first and that's a big piece of advice I would give you guys is a lot of people go into a golf round thinking I'm gonna have a certain swing I'm gonna hit the ball a certain way and they're pretty rigid you know they, they're trying to make the golf game a science instead of just um, doing the best they can with what the day gives them if it was a little bit drier it's totally fine to be a little more round and flat and maybe try to pick the ball but on days like today where it's wet and if you try to be flat and you the the club is at any point sticks in the ground before the ball, it's going to be a completely chunk shot instead of the the bounce kind of gliding along the, the grass. It's going to dig into the grass and you're going to hit it fat. So when you when you realize it's like a wet day like today, it's always good to get steep and um, kind of make sure you catch ball first and make that the priority. So a little tidbit there for you guys. Um, I had to take a little bit off of that tee shot because it was kind of a tough yardage for me. And um, it did a good job of not letting it get too far away from me. Hit a really good chip shot under the trees there. That was pretty much the only tree in the around the area. Um, just underread this one. I mean, sorry, overread this one a little bit. The greens were a bit slow, so that was something I was kind of struggling with a little bit as well. Because I had just finished playing the river course, and if you guys didn't check that out, um, I was my 70,000 subscriber special. And the river course was moving at like probably a nine, 
which isn't super fast, but these were probably like a seven because they were. I think they were actually prepping these greens for um, aerification. So, and something you can tell here, I'm a little more round on these swings. And the reason it's okay for me to be rounder here is because it's from the fairway, and I could tell it was a bit drier. It was a little bit, the ground was a bit higher, so it wasn't as, um, it wasn't as uh, wet. So I could do a more flat swing here, and it was better for me to do a flat swing to keep the ball flighting a little bit better through the wind. I hit a pretty good shot here, went a little bit long left, but that was the miss that you wanted to have. And here you can just, this is a perfect example. I mean, this is a very tough lie. And you just have to be steep and really, like, put a lot of speed behind the club. And that's something you'll notice me do there is it, it looks ugly, but if you if the club isn't accelerating through the impact zone, you're going to hit it, like, two feet unless you pick it absolutely perfect. So that was that really made this um, a lot tougher. And, again, there's another example of me leaving a putt short. Just having a little bit of trouble, I guess, uh, adjusting to the conditions. But that is something I should be better at. Um, so, and the wind was starting to go a little bit higher here, so you can see me doing my 10 o'clock swing, trying to fix that and keep it, flight the ball a little bit lower. Ended up squeezing this one out to the right a bit, and one of the things I've actually been working on since this video was shot is my swing plane, and what I mean by that is I'm, my swing, my club is kind of, kind of falling under the line a bit. And I'm kind of whipping it under and around me. And um, so me and my coach, Brandon Ajar, spent like 10, 12 hours yesterday working on adjusting that. And I'm actually, after the recording of this um, commentary, going to be going up there again to put some more work in on it. Um, so it's a work in progress. But as long as we have things to work on, that's good because then we're going to be able to keep improving. And uh, you can see that was a great example of... Um, really what can happen so easily when you're chipping in grain with the ground being really sticking wet i mean that can happen so easily and it really it's, it's on paper it doesn't really it's not really something that's picked up on but it really does make a big difference and that's why a lot of tour players and a lot of even just regular golfers struggle in florida because it's a very i mean struggle in like the southern um you know courses this isn't necessarily southern it's virginia but it, this is very reminiscent of a Florida-style course in terms of the grass and you know the way it plays. Remind me a lot of Florida, and so those areas can definitely. There's a different way to play the game. Um, it's definitely tougher. And there's another poor putt. <laughs> Starting to get a little annoyed at myself here. And now in a hole eight, and um, this was a plus. This was playing really tough. It, on the card, it was only 147 yards, but. You can see it's 155 yards to the pin, which is in the back shelf. So they had a really tough um, pin location here. It was in a bit of a headwind as well. But hit a pretty good shot. Um, didn't quite get it all the way back there, but definitely hit a shot that I was very happy with. And there was a guy, actually, there was a guy watching me from, I think it was hole four hit, and he started clapping. So I kind of waved and acknowledged that. But you can see kind of the pin's like, it's like almost like a boomerang-shaped green and the pins in like that back corner, so very safe and professional looking shot there. And uh, push this one a little bit. And one of the other things I'm work I'm working on is uh, trying to rotate the face a little better. I know I'm starting to kind of let the putter head drift away from me on the follow through, and pushing putts a little bit. So I'm letting the putter rotate on a um, on an arc, and it's, it's a work in progress. And something that's worth mentioning throughout this series is I'm going to have ups and downs where I'm playing well and then not well. And typically what that indicates is when I'm playing well, it's we've been working on something and it's finally starting to take. And then when I'm not playing as well, it's because we're working on something new. But eventually when it starts to take and become effective, I'll probably reach a new level of playing slightly better than I was before. And that's kind of how it is. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this is one of the worst lies I've ever had in my life. And I muscled a five right out of there and I got very lucky it just carried the water um by no more like maybe a yard um so definitely probably should have more probably should have laid up there honestly wasn't very smart of a play but got a chance to get up and down here for a birdie so not the worst chip in the world but ran it by a little bit more than I wanted and, um, I mean, sorry, I left it a little bit shorter than I wanted. So I have this putt to shoot a 38, uh, 37. And 
it just slid by the left side. So I will tap that in for a two over par 38. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.